Do you guys ever sit there staring at a blank wall with zero brain activity wondering what the heck did I just experience? Well, if so, that really sucks and I apologize, definitely been there, but you are in luck. After these 21 tips, you'll be well on your way towards bussing on the opposition, as the cool kids say. If you find at least 11 of these tips useful, feel free to drop me a like and a sub, it's uh, much appreciated. Anyways, let's go ahead and hop into number one. Utilizing fatigue wall hops to challenge height. This one is fairly intense, I'm not gonna lie to you guys. Fatigue wall hops are one of those things that definitely require a bit of finesse, but that definitely shouldn't discourage you from using them because they are quite useful. With the way that Apex Legends plays out, height tends to be incredibly oppressive. On every single map throughout multiple areas, you're bound to find a lip that you have to mantle over or perhaps a crate. Whoever holds that higher position ends up winning that fight 9 out of 10 times. Characters such as Horizon, Pathfinder, and Octane make such situations easier, but not everybody likes to run those legends. So what's the solution? Fatigue wall hops. This isn't going to be a movement tutorial, so I'm not going to get into the specifics, but whenever you jump in Apex Legends, there's kind of like a debuff that's applied. That very debuff is what allows you to fatigue wall hop. For those of you who are a little bit movement challenged, maybe mantle cancels are a better route for you guys to take. These also require a bit of finesse, but I think they're a fair bit easier. Treebree has a magnificent video covering this, so if you guys want to check that out, go ahead. Speaking of movement, repositioning with fade slides. The whole point of fade slides is to move quickly. The less you stand still and the faster you act, the more oppressive you will be. Utilizing this movement technique will unlock crazy amounts of aggression and in general open up a wide variety of pushes and safer repositioning such as going from cover to cover. So make sure you learn this now into number three. Oddly enough, this tip will probably be the most controversial on the list, but even with that, I think it's well worth learning, and that is recoil patterns. Go ahead and get your giggles out of the way, but I mean it. Learning to properly control recoil and not just rely on recoil smoothening or movement to compensate for you is absurdly useful. Once you get this down, you'll be able to farm Evo and even trade with marksman rifles, no problem. A super underrated side effect of learning recoil patterns is the improved ability to effectively microcorrect. Microcorrecting in particular is extremely useful for for controller players. Thumbsticks aren't particularly good at it, so it takes a lot of practice to get that dialed in. With that being said, I guarantee you guys, if you practice recoil control, your aim will improve all across the board. I promise. For tip number four, we're going to hop back into the movement stuff, but also not really. Stop jumping so much in gunfights. I'm serious, dude. You're literally just throwing. My buddy Wraith Crew, you should go check him out, talks about this nonstop. They do a ton of coaching for a variety of players, and one of the things that she teaches is properly utilizing strafes and jumps. Whenever you jump, you're locking yourself into an extremely predictable movement pattern pattern and well that makes you extremely easy to hit. You know that one science guy that said what comes up must come down? Well, yeah, that's you when you jump into the air. Quite predictable. That being said, if you're somebody like Zeto that has lurch strafing dialed in to the max, keep jumping. Tip number five, look at your HUD. This one's pretty simple to understand. The more information you have, the better you can act in any given situation. Your HUD gives you so, 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 so much information, whether that be your teammates positioning, healing, your teammates health, whether they're shooting or not, believe it or not, and obviously what zone it is and how many squads are left. Taking note of all this information every few seconds will most definitely help you win more gunfights. And even if it doesn't help you, I guarantee that you will get at least more KP. Number six, learn heal windows. Have you ever died? to zone from a mistimed heal. Yeah, me too. It's not fun and it's incredibly embarrassing. There have been times where I throw away beautiful, beautiful games to zone. Most recently, a 4K that I posted on YouTube. You guys can check that out. But don't go yet because you still got to learn the heal windows. Okay, so listen up. Ring one through three do the exact same damage. So you really shouldn't be caught off guard from these so long as you follow this. Whenever you want to use a Phoenix kit in zone, you're going to do it before your last shield bar runs out. So 25 HP left. Med kits, two ticks into the storm. I don't really know what HP that is. I don't know how much damage Storm does. My bad. But yeah, just tick, tick, do it now. If the third tick begins, cancel it immediately and pop a syringe. As for syringes, you're like, you're fine 99% of the time. If you mess that up, I, I don't know what to say to you. Number seven. This one is probably the most important tip on this entire list because it will make up for 99% of your mistakes. Have some god dang confidence, dude. Without confidence, you're a napkin flying through the wind. And what I mean by that is that the enemies, aka wind, will take you wherever they want. You do not have agency here. You do not get to make decisions. Whatever the game throws at you, you just kind of like flow with it and you fly around through the wind and you feel lost, all right? You're hopeless. Something about Katy Perry paper bag floating through the wind, you know? So yeah, whenever you role play a paper napkin, you give away way too much space, you overheal, you never push, and in general, you end up losing opportunity after opportunity, all while digging yourself a deeper and deeper hole. This is really something that you're going to have to fine tune for yourself and with your squad. But if I had one big tip for this, it's to always look for the aggressive option. Whenever you're the aggressor, you are actively taking control of the situation. So I think that's at least a good start. Number eight, 
Adapt your playstyle to fit your teammates. This is so, so, so important. Not quite as important as number seven, but still pretty important. There's not a single more tilting thing than having a random that's A, far too aggressive and stims into everything only to get deleted, or B, an absurdly passive rampart that sat back with a charge rifle doing damage, but is too far away to actually follow up on any of it. Properly meshing with your team will obviously help prevent that. That being said, it is quite difficult. Often you're forced out of your comfort zone, but I guarantee you'll be better for it. Just keep practicing, you'll get there. Number nine, respect team comps, especially now. In season 16, this is like freaking, it, it's it's ridiculous how strong character synergies are. You guys, I'm sure have been watching ALGS here and there, and you've seen the Seer Catalyst combos. And for those of you who haven't, basically you just get to shoot through Catalyst wall. Like it's, I don't know, man, I don't know. <laughs> Please take it out of the game. So yeah, uh, basically just, before you fight, always take a look at what you're going up against and analyze their strengths and weaknesses. If there's a Wraith port, don't take it. There's going to be a Watson fence at the end of it. If you get bang smoke and hear a Bloodhound ult, run away. You're going to get beamed through the smoke. It's that easy. Number 10, probably the most simple tip on this list if I had to guess. Basically, it's just going to be hitting your map key. Being able to fully visualize potential chokes, rotations, and ring helps you figure out your situation a heck of a lot better. Once upon a time, I thought that looking at my minimap was enough, but it's definitely not. There's a lot more information to be gathered, especially if you're a fan of Broken Moon. Being able to actually see the zip lines and where they lead to, zip rails rather, will help you plan your rotations and kind of expect where people are going to be coming from. Speaking of maps and rings, number 11 is learning the ring algorithm. Definitely a complicated thing to figure out fully. I'm sure you guys have seen the Timmy clip floating around where he's like doing all this like math stuff. Like if you take A and B and then multiply that by C, it equals Z and then you apply Z to a and that equals y i don't i don't know maybe my brain's just really small but i did not get what he was talking about if you guys want to do what i do basically the ring is going to want to pull in a pattern so if it's going up into the right it's going to keep going up into the right the next thing you want to look for is playable space areas like mountains and cliffs are not going to be playable so the ring will most likely not pull there yeah basically it's just going to pull into a corner over and over and over again until it closes to nothing number 12 learning to count rats this one's pretty underrated i think you can get away with not doing it but it's genuinely really useful to properly gauge solo rats and duos you need to take how many squads are left multiply that by three and for every player less than the number you get there are at least that many partials number 13 this one's a tough one you're gonna have to break some muscle memory to properly apply this one stop hip firing assault rifles gone are the days where you could just use an ar the entire game a lot of times i find myself picking up a flatline at a pk but never switching to the pk because i'd rather have consistent damage than whiff a pk shot and throw an entire fight unfortunately this is no longer the case. AR hit fire kind of sucks, so just stop using it if you can. Number 14, get comfortable with more weapons. Apex is a battle royale and therefore perfect loot 100% of the time is not possible, especially when you are hot dropping. So yeah, make sure you utilize a mixtape game mode and start practicing with those P20s, Mozams, Spitfires, what have you. Number 15, Burger King foot ladders. Stop spamming abilities off cooldown. I know it seems like you're getting nonstop value from it, but the reality is that you are missing opportunities. This is especially applicable to characters such as Seer. I can't tell you how many random Seers I've seen go ahead and scan a character, but then not be able to cancel or revive within the next 20, 30 seconds, however long the cooldown is. Unless you're playing somebody like Fuse that just wants to pump out damage nonstop, I think it's better to wait for an opportunity to get the most value. That being said, don't treat ultimates like this. At least that's my philosophy. I personally rather kind of waste it in a fight than having needed it and not have used it because then I'm going to be dead and I'm not going to be able to use it and it's going to be this whole thing and I'm like, oh, I should have used my ult. No, I'm just going to avoid that altogether. Freaking throw that thing in there. Number 16. Don't stall fights. I am so absurdly guilty of this. I, I don't even want to talk about it, to be honest, but I have to. I must do right by you guys. This tip is super, super relevant, especially now that Catalyst is meta because, well, she can board up doors over and over and over again and that'll lead to more stalling. Whenever you stall fights, you're basically just inviting third parties to come on in. And even if you're not, you're burning heal after heal, ammo after ammo, and you're just going to screw yourself in the long run. So might as well look for another fight. Number 17. This tip is gargantuan. Make mistakes together. It sounds kind of counterintuitive when you say it out loud, but trust me, whenever you make a mistake as a team, there's a chance that you guys can clean it up, whether that be through mechanics, luck, or sheer force, often the third one. Whatever the reason is, trust. It's way better to try and correct a mistake together than to run away and rat the entire game out, given this applies more to three stacks than like, you know, solo players, but still. Number 18, beware of the bait. <laughs> 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 what is that, dude?
Number 19. Long range fights do not exist. You guys are going to hate me for this, but I, I mean it. I really, really, really do mean this. I don't care who you are. You are not going to wrap up a fight at range. Unless you have a Kraber with aimbot, this is, it's, it's just not possible, dude. People pop batteries, people heal. I don't know. The way I view things is that snipers are fantastic openers. So you need to use them as such. Whenever you deal damage, that's an opportunity for you to close the gap and move up. I think it's really easy to kind of hang back and hit all these crazy sentinel shots and feel really good about yourself. Like, oh my God, I did so much damage. My teammates have no damage. How did we lose that? But when you really think about it, that damage that you were doing didn't really mean anything. They were just healing it up right away. So I don't know. That concludes our list. I hope you guys enjoyed it. Let me know if I helped you guys out at all. And if you disagree with any of my tips, go ahead and let me know in the comments. I'd absolutely love it if you guys were to argue with me down there. Not actually, please be nice. I will cry. And with all that being said, I'll see you guys later. Peace.